Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced React WooCommerce Theme Development with WooCommerce REST API. So as you can see that in the previous video, we built the pagination. Now, what we don't have yet is the actual page to go to. So let's build that. So go to our blog page and we'll say pages slash blog and then slash page. So what we need to do is because the URL is supposed to be slash page slash page number. We'll have to create a directory inside of blog called page. Inside of this, we'll have a page number. Okay. So it'll be page number dot JS. So let's do that. So how we did like for post, we did like slug dot JS. We're calling this page number dot JS. I mean, you could call slug, but slug doesn't make, make sense, right? Because it's not actually a slug, it's a page number. So I can call it whatever I want, but when I'm accessing it, like in the slug, when we were accessing it, we were accessing it by giving that name, post dot slug. Uh, when accessing it over here, we were using params dot slug. But now because we're going to be creating page number dot JS. So when we use it inside of get static block, we'll use params dot page number dot. We'll put it by params dot page number. That's how it'll be available. So whatever name you give there, that's what will be available in the get static props with that name. Okay. And of course, you have to use the same name here also in the params. So in our case, it'll be page number. So I'll show you that. So now I'm just going to copy this whole thing and I'm going to paste it here and I'll explain to you. Okay. So this is a component called page. You can call it page number if you want. I think that'll make more sense, but I'm leaving it to page for now. Okay, you can change it to page number if you want like that. Okay, uh, doesn't really matter. Okay, now what, will happen, what happens here? Get static power is going to get all the posts, get the post data. Then we're going to get the page count. In this case, it was 12. Then we are going to basically build the paths. Remember I said that when you're using slug.js, you were naming this params is slug, but because you're using page number, now using param page number here, okay? So you loop through it, you basically build the paths, and depending on the pages count, let's say there are 12 pages, so you're just creating, you're just taking like a an array with 12 items, filling them uh, with the values, params, page number, index plus one. So it's, if it's the first item, index is zero, zero plus one, one. So this page, it'll be params page number one, it'll be a string. Then second will be uh, page number two, page number three, and so on and so forth. We're passing that paths over here, setting fallbacks to false. And then over here, inside of get static paths, getting the header and footer. From params, we'll be able to access page number like we did here. We accessed slug from params, now we're accessing page number from params. Just destructuring and nothing else. We get the post data using our get posts function, which I already explained to you earlier, making a REST API call, getting all the posts. But we're getting a specific page. So what this will be equivalent to, if you check get post function, is going to pass the page number in the URL. So when we are getting it, we're going to be getting the page number two or three and so on and so forth like that. Okay. So we get whatever page number user is on. So if they access like blog slash page slash two, two will be available here and two will be passed to get post. You're going to be getting the page number two over here like that. Okay. Now, then we pass the header and footer. We pass the post data. We reallocate and all of that stuff. So this page number is very similar to what we have on blog, except that certain dynamics have changed. This is just a single page, but this is a dynamic page, uh, which depends uh, rather than pulling the first page in the blog index.js, we're pulling the first page. In this one, we are actually pulling whatever uh, page number user is accessing from the URL. If it's accessing page number two, we'll get the data for page number two, which means next uh, nine posts for page number two. Okay, so we'll pass all of that data and then same thing over here, just having layout, blog, post, pagination, whatever we were doing in the blog index, we're doing the same thing here also because it's, it's the same, it's a similar kind of page, right? Just a few things here that um, accidentally like, so of course, if you are on the blog page like that, 
you're actually on page number one but if user accidentally types like manually types page number one we still want to redirect the user to this blog page right and for that we're using this we're saying if router.query.page number equals one over here page number equals one then push the user to the blog page because we don't want to be showing like page number one you still want this 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 page the main landing page right that's why just redirecting the user nothing else okay seo again you know you can copy this seo thingy from here and just paste it here and then i think you can change if you want to you can change it to like page number just blog oops, blog page number like that so blog page whatever page number is like you can say like page and then page number okay so you can do that and then pass the seo here okay so you have all of that going on there uh one new addition in this you will see i've added this header redirects and return data so what's that so sometimes there could be a possibility that we don't get the expected data or maybe he's trying to access page number 100 which doesn't really exist because we only have 12 page in the response that we're getting at the moment in the current situation right so what happens then so we need to handle that we basically need to redirect the user to 404 or you know whatever that um, error page is so for that we're going to create a function so i'm going to do that let's copy this look for that function and so we'll go to our slug.js and paste it there so source utils oops utils slug.js and just paste it there is empty we need to pull it from lodash so we'll pull is empty from lodash on top okay so what's happening here we're taking the default props which is nothing but this guy right here and then we're getting the data and we're getting the field okay so if the data is empty redirect the user to 503 so this is the next jx feature uh, next js feature and if you pa if you return uh, redirect destination and status code from your get static props function instead of these then it'll redirect the user to that particular page with that status code in case if you're looking for a specific data with that field and if in the data that field is not available like in our case we're looking for a post data right because if you look at the api we're looking for the post data this guy right here so in the data we might get quite a few things but we only need post data. we, don't, we want to make sure that this is not empty so if this is empty then you can just say 404 like not found because think about it if if a page exists there's supposed to be some post on that right? if the posts are not then something is wrong somewhere right so you can say not found then it defaults to 404 page okay so you can handle that so what we're trying to do what you're trying to achieve over here is that rather than we just returning this default props here we kind of filter it out uh it's kind of a you can think of like a middleware you know if you if you heard about middlewares before returning this data is going through this check if it finds the data is not available it's going to handle it properly and send it to whatever wherever is supposed to be done now why are we doing it through a function why wouldn't we directly use it there because tomorrow we could be multiple we could have multiple scenario we and we may want to handle them differently rather than changing it at all places going at one places and changing it we can just do it in one function and handle things differently that's by a function you'll be seeing that i'll be reusing this function over and over again so basically this is handling your data in case if it's not available and redirecting the user to appropriate status codes okay so in the next video we're going to be building the um, 404 page also but for now you can understand that that's what it does right so there you go so that's that and then let's see if that works go over here and then refresh and now if i click on page number two 
congratulations you have the page number two so if you want to verify bring it here page number two the first post is there there will be no one right let's go to page number three so we go to page number three first post is well not at making that's that excellent and you can see it's automatically getting highlighted because we had put a class remember uh, is active class and on you know you have this different um, styling for this that's why you're getting that highlighted if I click on the fifth one notice that uh, you have this dot dot here so this is all being done by that function which is actually returning this array okay so that's all done by that that's all done by that and then you have a previous next so if you click on next it should ideally take you to the sixth number post six uh, page so you clicked on that it took you to six if you click on previous it'll take you to the fifth page you can see on top it's taken you to the fifth one that's great excellent now i remember we spoke about that if user directly tries to hit uh, by manually typed page one see what happens hit that see it's now redirecting the user to slash block because that's what we did right we said that if the user comes to page number one we're going to redirect the user to slash block and that's exactly what it did it redirected the user to slash block which was a landing page excellent great awesome so i hope you did like the video if you did please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already do start my repository to support my work uh, my repository is next year's woocommerce rest api follow me on github and twitter and uh, do give super thanks to support my work and join the membership for more perks and i'm going to see you in the next video thank you very much Bye bye mm -hmm.